Serious, what is the most disturbing documentary you've ever seen? You slash brand new sentience responded. The Jared Fogel documentary was chilling. I've heard of pedophiles of course but hearing actual audio, and how graphic he was, and so casual about it. I'm a true crime junkie but something about that just made me sick to my stomach. Edit, because people have been asking, it's called Jared from Subway, Catching a Monster and it's on Netflix. You slash interesting underscore sock 9142 replied to this comment to say. My ex's dad had a stroke and it fucked him up pretty bad. He lost the use of the entire left side of his body. Fucked up his cognitive processes, slowed his speech down so badly he just. Never spoke anymore. Occasionally you'd get a word or two out of him, but rarely. One day we were watching the news when the story about Jared Fogler being a piece of shit child diddler came on. And out of nowhere my ex's dad loudly proclaimed. I knew IT. It was the most he had said in a long time and the most animated he had said anything in like a decade. We all kind of died laughing afterwards but now I think of that anytime anyone brings up that subway fuck. You slash Hudwig underscore Von underscore Muscles responded. The Jimmy Savile documentary on Netflix because as you watch it you realize an entire country came together to give one specific pedophile the best life he could possibly have. Like it seems as if everyone knew, but nobody did anything. Savile would straight up walk into juvenile detention centers for teenage girls and say, Oi, it's me, Jimmy, can I borrow some girls for the day? You sure can, Jimmy, Jim will fix it. You slash Borbolator 77 responded. Gabriel Fernandez trials. He was only eight when he passed away from child abuse. I sobbed almost throughout the whole thing. What happened to this poor kid was horrific and heartbreaking. For those who haven't watched it, it's available on Netflix in the US. You slash DR Tagnan Pierre responded. Brothers Keeper, the oldest of four brothers in upstate NY is found dead, and the police basically forced one of the younger brothers to sign a bogus confession. These guys lived in a shack with no running water or power. They were illiterate, and I believe two or three even had to share a bed. Super fucked up story. Another one is called Maya Maxima Culpa, Silence in the House of God the horrible story of a Midwestern Catholic school for the deaf who had a monster of a director who sexually abused the kids. He would have older boys abuse the younger kids so they would be broken in for him. He even targeted kids whose parents didn't know sign language, so there was pretty much no way for the kids to tell their parents what was going on. It explains a lot about how far the church will go to cover up abuse. You slash deleted responded. Fave several. 1. Rain in my heart. It follows a clinic for alcoholics to get treatment for their alcohol-induced illnesses. There are four subjects that the doc follows, by the end two of them have passed away. 2.66 months. Follows a learning disabled alcoholic who slips under the social services radar and has to rely on an elderly gay man he's in a dubiously consensual relationship with and who goes from loving to abusive at a moment's notice. It's filmed by a mutual friend of theirs who is another alcoholic and frequently homeless, so the film is very uncomfortably fly on the wall. 3. The Hunt for Britain's Pedophiles. Really displays what a brutal job working in a specialist unit for CSA is and just how many hoops the average pedophile is willing to jump through to get access to their victims. 4. The Dark Side of Porn, The Search for Animal Farm. A hard look at the life of a woman who would be known as the queen of bestiality porn and what drove her to it. 5. I Think We're Alone Now and I'm Your Number One Fan, two documentaries following obsessive fans of pop culture icons. Alternates between funny, sad, and deeply concerning. 6. The Killing of America. Old doc about violence and crime in America. Features a close-up from the Zapruder film which really made me realize how brutal that crime really was. You slash rant couple responded. Titicut Follies it was filmed in a hospital for the criminally insane. It shows human abuse and even death if one patient inmate. Interesting fact is the facility was aware the camera was there and allowed the filming yet abused patients right on camera. Does that not make you wonder what went on when no camera was present? The film was forced to include a disclaimer that conditions improved. Yet from how the disclaimer was worded you can tell the filmmaker did not believe that. You slash way fast WX nerd responded. The documentary Restrepo, about an army unit sent to the Korengal Valley of Afghanistan does it for me. Imagine being sent into the bottom of a mountain valley so steep it's almost impossible to walk it without proper training and going against fighters that have lived there for almost 2,000 years. Oh, and you have to go to the top of this hill and build an observation post while under fire. You slash commercial underscore place 9807 responded. I don't watch a lot of documentaries, one I did that pissed me off was called Half the Sky, 
It's about women in Africa with vaginal fistulas caused by rape or from having traumatic births at too young an age and the aid workers trying to help them live with these fistulas or get them surgically repaired. Then it goes to red light districts in India where young girls get pimped out. It made me want to blow shit up. Just so sad and infuriating. You slash Pollock underscore Madlad responded. Wako. When you realize what bullshit those people believed and in the end, died for nothing in the worst way possible, bullet into head by others or by yourself, or carbon monoxide poisoning, with some of them actually being children who knew nothing about that religious stuff. Really horrible stuff. Then I realized what some religious sects are, more like prisons, than actual faith society, main guy in waste fathered many kids, with girls who were under 18 and probably had no consent, he smuggled guns and other illegal stuff. You slash hybrid still responded. I was watching a Vice documentary on warlords in Liberia. And I had a friend recommend it, who is a high-level security operator talking about how good Americans have it. Everything they talked about was so rough and uncomfortable and just seeing the visual of people having to use the beach as a toilet and the disease and conditions, not to mention cannibalistic warlords maiming people for fun just really sucked the life out of me. You slash TJ8686 underscore responded. 9-11 by Gedeon and Jules Nordit. Originally, it was supposed to be a rather simple documentary about FDNY and their daily activities. Next thing you know, you see the first plane hit, which happens to be one of only two known pieces of footage to capture the first plane. The most chilling part for me is seeing firefighters in the lobby looking around trying to figure out what these loud sounds were coming from, only to realize it's the jumpers hitting the ground outside. You slash Louis underscore guy responded. I work for Safelight and the company will aggressively try to use aftermarket glass from Fuyao, Pinkerton, PGW. We are directed to recycle glass to send back to the company. After watching American Factory I was pretty disgusted with myself knowing I'm a part of all the controversy. Albeit a tiny tiny part but it's enough to make me want to leave the industry. You slash affectionate ad 6642 responded. Twin flame on Netflix in think. Super fucked up. You slash life in Wentworth replied to this comment saying. Super fucked up. I feel like it's easy to say the victims are stupid or whatever but I just think it's bloody sad. These cult leaders clearly target people who are vulnerable and desperate and that's just cruel and tragic. Cults like that are no new thing, they've existed for a long time and it's easy to watch and judge but it's what makes these organizations cults so interesting that they seem to pull an array of people in. That's the very disturbing part. I think it's very psychological not simply people making dumb decisions. You see in any cult they get them in with small actions at first and then when they feel a part of this community get more and more extreme and live in a bubble of people doing the same thing. It takes a lot to stand up in a room full of people who believe one thing and to say actually I think they're lying to us. They make those people your whole support network so if you speak up you feel like you're losing everything. I think it's underestimated how scary that must be for people who feel like they have nothing else except this one thing they've invested their life in. You slash firefighter underscore Avon responded. Night will fall not so disturbing to me personally but I've studied WW2 and the Holocaust so seen plenty of similar images. Some of the footage was used in the Nuremberg trials. It's footage from parts of a 1945 documentary that got lost for 70 years. Some of the footage was to be used in an official British government tea documenting the camps in 1945. The footage was taken by combat photographers as the camps were liberated. Some within days and if remember correctly, one was within hours that I do recommend thinking twice before seeing it, if you thought Schindler's list was too graphic. This is not sanitized footage either. I do highly recommend it for people that can deal with it. ETA be warned, there is a chance you will never be able to forget what you see. I still vividly remember certain parts of it. You slash deleted responded. A life without pain. I was in a childhood development course in college and we watched a video on a childhood genetic disorder. It follows three little girls was born without the ability to feel pain. From birth to seven years old, about when the documentary was filmed, she would constantly mutilate herself and injure herself without even being aware. Picture a baby toddler who constantly gouges her own eyes out because she likes the sensation of feeling her squishy eyeballs. Imagine a toddler that recognizes self-injury upsets her parents, so does it constantly to get attention, especially since it doesn't hurt her. She had to wear goggles to keep her from gouging her eyes out, but by then she had formed scar tissue all over her eyes and had become nearly blind by seven. To this day, this is the only documentary LVE seen that has made me physically ill. Edit. Found the documentary title. You slash life in Wentworth responded. The one on Woodstock was really fucked up too. 
especially when they said some truck drove into one of the sets and a woman was being gang raped inside and just nobody did anything. The absolute chaos that turned into. I feel just awful for the young people, especially women, who just went to have a chill time and to have it turned into what it was, especially the amount of sexual assaults and rapes that went on is just fucked. Oh and actual deaths. And then seeing some of them say yeah it was wild but LD do it again glad I was there, sickens me. If it was just a bit of vandalism and general rowdiness LD understand it could be seen as kinder exciting but knowing that people were traumatized in horrific ways and talking about it so lightheartedly like it was just a crazy fun thing that happened is disgusting. You slash Yukumizu responded. Yes. And close to it is shiny happy people. The Duggar family secrets. The wiki summary. The series explores the dark secrets of the Duggar family, best known for the TLC reality series 19 Kids and Counting. It investigates Josh Duggar's conviction for knowingly receiving and possessing child pornography, and the family's ties to the Institute in Basic Life Principles and its controversial leader Bill Gothard, showing how the organization has influenced the Duggars. The influence of Christian youth organizations, including Generation Joshua, is also discussed in the documentary. It's more terrifying to me that they are so closely connected to Mike Johnson, new Speaker of the House of Representatives in the US. He campaigned with Duggar and has ties to the same fundamentalist Christian nationalist organizations, like the Family Research Council. A must watch. You slash expression little responded. Blackfish. The number of people and animals suffering and dying for corporate greed in the name of, alleged, conservation is so fucked up. The deaths, the gaslighting, the horrible injuries, the horrendous unethical treatment of everyone but the bigwigs for dollar 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 is fucked up. Already listed but the trials of Gabriel Fernandez, Keep Sweet, Pray and Obey and The Bridge see all very upsetting. You slash Joe Brownflakes responded. I remember as a kid there was some investigative journalism piece of Thai kitty brothels. This was back in the 90s. I was a teen and I remember bits and pieces, but the one bit that stuck in my brain was seeing this man carrying two very young girls past. I mean they must have been four or five years old. He had one in each arm and they looked so, normal. But they were obviously being taken to the next customer. Jesus, the thing was just so surreal and horrible. I never had thought that it was even possible for that kind of evil to exist, but damn. You slash DR Vagax responded. Ordinary men. It's about how the regular Joes of Germany but also doctors and teachers, turned into absolute unhinged executioners during the Nazi occupation of Poland and also squashes some myths people had about them like that they these people could not deny to execute Jews while in reality anyone could have said no and walk away without much repercussion. It also shows footage of how eerily unaffected they are when they have to retell what they have done. You slash deleted responded. The list has to include. In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. It's a masterpiece and chilling as fuck, also a great movie. The Death and Life of Dith Pran by Sidney Shanberg it's the basis of the movie The Killing Fields which is also a masterpiece. The Perfect Storm and a Death in Belmont by Sebastian Junger who also wrote Restrepo mentioned here by others. They made The Perfect Storm into a big Hollywood movie based off the documentary novel which was oddly about the actual storm and a story about meteorology and so much more. Anything by Hampton Sides. Ghost Soldiers about the Bataan Death March was made into two different documentaries and a movie. Blood and Thunder is about Kit Carson and will be made into a movie. It's great. Hellhounds on His Trail is about James Earl Ray and the week leading up to his killing of Martin Luther King and until his capture. It is gripping and a story never told before. But by far his best is in The Kingdom of Ice which is one of my absolute favorite stories and such a completely fantastic unbelievable story about early Arctic explorers it defies belief. It's a true story that is almost a terrestrial version of the Bullock film Gravity in that the actual explorers stuck the landing against all odds in an unbelievable way. You slash strong underscore add underscore 3722 responded. Nazi concentration camps. Made in 1945 and used as evidence in the Nuremberg trials. It's one thing to know the statistics, and another to see the scale of death. Something about the juxtaposition of the horror, with the almost mundane nature of the logistics needed to deal with all the bodies is hard to reconcile. Like part of you wants each body to be treated with the respect it deserves, but another part realizes the pile of bodies is so huge that yeah, there probably isn't a better alternative to shoving them into a giant pit with a bulldozer. You slash micked 1989 responded. I don't remember the name of it but I saw it around like 2014 or something. The footage was from the 90s I'm not sure when the dick itself was made. About a bunch of Russian children basically living in the streets. Sleeping and playing in abandoned buildings I think even the sores. They were filthy and looked malnourished. 
what money they had would go towards buy industrial glue to huff and get high off of. Video showed these kid one time did buy some glue but some cops caught him then poured it onto one of the kids' heads. Industrial stuff so it wasn't camping off. The cops just laughed. At the end one of the kids the video was following had died, a little girl. She had parents but I guess they didn't take care of her. I think the kids' parents were mostly alcoholics and not present. I mostly remember a lot of the other kids attending her funeral and crying. One kid in particular when addressing the parents said I hope you choke on your vodka. I cried a lot. You slash attack underscore helicopter one responded. I can't think of many LVE watched recently but Africa Adio was quite disturbing at points. It shows the pure devastation that the decolonization of Africa caused and some scenes are quite hard to watch, though I'm sure LVE watched more disturbing documentaries none of them have stuck with me as much as Africa Adio. If you plan on watching it watch the Italian version, the original, with subtitles as the American version portrays the Africans as complete savages and is incredibly biased towards the colonialists. There are many gory scenes but it is an incredibly good documentary which doesn't fear to show the pure horror that really happens in our world. You slash Tyler in high FI responded. I watched one years ago when Netflix first launched in Canada and their catalogue was just a mix of BBC content and absolutely bizarre shit. It was called I Think We're Alone Now and it was about a few of Tiffany's superfans. It started off fairly normal and by halfway through it was pretty clear that this documentary wasn't really about Tiffany superfans but more so about parasocial relationships and other associated mental health disorders and Tiffany was just somehow the most accessible conduit. It was fucking wild and I'm pretty sure at least one of the superfans was one fucked up fast food order away from going full Ricardo Lopez on her. Just an absolutely bizarre and oddly disturbing documentary for how benign it feels at the surface level. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end, leave your own stories down below I would love to read them. If you would like to see more videos like this please like and subscribe it helps me out greatly.